only to ask if there's one person that has an opening statement. Yes, I have an opening statement. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. And uh, initially, I'd like to acknowledge all the victims of uh, domestic violence in Australia, uh, particularly um, Nathan Cattens and his family, who had his daughter recently murdered by their mother in 2019. The, the, Dan the family of Daniel Surtes, who was burned alive by his wife in 2019. James McLeod, whose four children were murdered by their mother in May 2019. Aaron Cockman and his family, whose four children and ex-wife were murdered by their grandfather in 2018. The family of Darren Reed, who was burned alive by his partner in 2016. The Good family, who had their three children murdered by their mother in 2015. The Thiday family, who had eight children murdered by their mother in 2014. And I'd like to uh, acknowledge the, the Clark and Baxter family, who are left with the deaths of their children and grandchildren because of Rowan Baxter's actions. And ultimately, the reason why I guess we're here is discussing coercive control behaviour. Um, I mention these names, the names of these victims, as a reminder to you, our elected leaders and policy makers, that domestic violence victims are not defined by their gender. And that your job when making recommendations to government on new laws is to do so with the goal of ensuring all victims of family and domestic violence are provided with protection regardless of their gender. I'd like to remind the committee that uh, the Australian Brotherhood of Fathers has been talking about coercive controlling behaviour for the last seven years publicly. We've been running a campaign called Not Your Right, which talks specifically about coercive controlling behaviour post-separation. Uh, and uh, we, we thank the committee for an opportunity to speak today.